Hi, Les from Thailand here. Today's video is going to be about living with a violent girlfriend. So it's not all happy days in the land of smiles. There are many girls that are violent and aggressive and you've got to be very careful about the girlfriends that you're choosing. Now I can speak from experience because I have lived with a violent partner and I will come on to this story a little later on in the video. So with regard to living with a, a violent girlfriend, I deplore violence of any kind, whether it be a man to a woman or a woman to a man. It just shouldn't happen at all. But unfortunately, in the land of smiles, sometimes it isn't always a happy story. And my story is about living with a violent partner. So this story is about those people that are living with a girlfriend that is violent it is time to make a move. The chances of it changing to something better is very slim and far between. I'm the person to tell you this because I've tried and I did it and I failed. Now my story is about me and the first girlfriend that I live with here in Thailand. Now she was a, a cashier at a bar and I was introduced to her by a friend of mine who has lived in Thailand for almost 10 years. And he says, Les, she's a good girl. She'll take good care of you and she's nice and bubbly and everybody likes her and she was she was nice and bubbly and everybody got on with her really well now me and this girl we were together for over two years so it isn't a flash in the pan situation two years and this evolved into two years now at the beginning she never used to drink alcohol at all and then because we used to go partying we used to go around different places and we lived in jaunty and and so we had a few friends and everybody was a social drinker, so she sort of got introduced into alcohol. Now alcohol changed her mood in some ways with regard to when she had a one or two beers, she just changed her personality and she became more aggressive. Only a small amount to begin with, but you could see a different mannerisms in her, the way she used to behave once she had a, a lot to drink. So again, I didn't really have a problem with that. And as I say, she was a small girl, in very small, petite, funny looking. Everybody thought the world of her. She was fun to be with. She was uh, good at English. Everybody adored her. Everybody thought butter wouldn't melt in her mouth, but I know different. And as the story goes on, you'll get to hear actually what happened. And it isn't a pretty picture. As we were living together, we opened up a coffee shop together and she used to serve the coffees and cook the food and everything was going good, it was a good little business we closed the shop every time we went on holiday, there was nothing tying financial worries, we didn't have any because the, the shop actually ran itself and so there was no worries in our relationship um, until one day she was diagnosed with having cancer so she had to go and have an operation to have a, a full hysterectomy uh, obviously she was scared and worried about all of this lot so um, I paid for her to have this life-saving operation if you like and ever since she had the operation of a hysterectomy her mood changed she changed to a different person and it was after this operation she started drinking more so because she started drinking more she became more aggressive now I'm a very tolerant guy, lots of things go over my head and I can stand a lot of some, somebody being moody. You know, we all get moody sometimes, but her moods became more and more often. And one day she just went off one and she just smashed everything that she could get her hands on. Um, my camera gear, my hi-fi, my DVD player. She just smashed it and stomped on it. And uh, so I had to restrain her from smashing all my stuff up. Uh, big tears, big emotion, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Les, you know, I've done all of this lot. But sort of that was the, the tip of the iceberg as it started. So I asked her, what went wrong? What, what's gone wrong with you? You know, what, why are you becoming this moody person? And she, she didn't have an answer for it. I asked her if she had money problems, if she, had, if she was a gambler. No, she wasn't, had she, she taken any drugs? I said, I'm here, no matter what problems you've got, tell me and we'll discuss it and we'll try and sort it all out. But I said, I can't live with somebody who's 
being emotional and depressive and, and violent, especially towards me. It's because I'm not a violent person. So when everything went on for a little bit longer, and then another day, I can't even remember what it was, but again, alcohol was involved, and she come at me with a lump of 2v2 wood, and um, she hit me over the head, and defend I had defensive marks all over my arms, and I ran down the stairs, and I ran outside into the street. Now over the road, we had a bar, and I went and seen the lady that worked behind the bar. She knew who we were and she knew who my girlfriend was. And I asked her, because my phone was upstairs in the apartment, to phone the police. And her answer was, let's, let's go away. We've got customers. And because my girlfriend was shouting and screaming in Thai in the street at me, waving this lump of 2 by 2 wood, ready to hit me again, obviously, we were the centre of attention for the whole bar. And this girl says, let's just leave the bar, I've got customers, leave the bar. So I asked this other girl in the bar whether she could help me phoning the police and she said, oh, my phone's broke, my phone's broke. So if you go into any sort of trouble, ties, help ties and they don't help for langs. So anyway, the police station was just around the corner from where we lived. So I had blood coming from my, my head, I had a head wound, I had blood coming from my arms and I walked into the police station and this was after midnight. So. The response from the police were just like, yeah, okay, couldn't speak any English. And anyway, three policemen came with me to where we lived and sort of talked to her. And my story and her story are a million miles apart. And obviously the police are going to believe the Thai person as opposed to me. But there's me covered in blood and not a mark on my girlfriend. So anyway, the, the policeman said, do you want me to arrest her? Do you want me to take her to jail? I said, no, no, no. I said, just tell her to stop it. So when I slept at a friend's that night and we went down to the following morning and she again, she just smashed everything that she could get all of and smashed it all up, threw all my clothes down the stairs. And again, alcohol was the prime candidate for this, for her being in a, such a, a bad mood and temper. So I love the girl. We really, when, when it was good, it was really, really good. So I sat down with her and talked again and we discussed that she might be having an imbalance in her hormones because she's had the hysterectomy. So I suggested that we go to the hospital and go and see the doctor to, with regard to having a look at hormone problems because it could be hormonal. I was reading on Google why people can change having the hysterectomy and this seemed to be one of the problems. I just thought, by having medication, it might solve everything. So anyway, we went to the hospital and I was with a doctor and the doctor spoke good English and the doctor said to her that they'd actually left one ovary in. So it wasn't a total complete hysterectomy, which I was led to believe it was. So they left one ovary in, so it gives the estrogen, so it actually controls her um, hormones. So the lady doctor said to her, it's not me you want to see, it's a crazy doctor you want to go and see. Obviously, she wasn't very happy at that explanation and we came home. So we came home, sat and talked about it again. She said, I'm going to give, the up, give up the alcohol. It, it seems to be that the more alcohol I have to drink, the more I get moody and aggressive. And she said, I don't want to be this person. She said, I really don't want to be this person. So everything went okay for a, a few weeks. And then we had a friend who had a bar, maybe a hundred yards from where we lived. Somebody was having a bit of a party, so we went there and then she started drinking. And I thought, oh, well, this didn't last for very long, but okay, if she has one or two drinks, I'm okay with that. And she did, she only had one or two drinks. Now, I had some problems with my TV back at the, at the shop and the fact that my news programmes had gone off and the guy at the bar said to me, just, you just need to reset the system, Les, just turn it off and turn it back on and then go through the settings department and reset your TV. So I said, okay, I'll do that. But when I go back to the shop, I'll reset the TV. Thanks very much for giving me their advice. As all the TV settings were in Thai, I asked her how I can turn this TV from Thai settings to English settings so I could retune the, the TV. And at that, she gave me one of them looks, a look that could kill. And then she flung a dinner at the wall 
and shouted and swore at me saying like, you know, how do you expect me to know how to do this? She said, I've no idea. She said, you buy all these expensive things not knowing how they work. I said, well, if it's too much trouble, just forget about it, then I'll sort it out tomorrow. And then I sort of left it and I thought, here we go again. So I slept in the spare bedroom that night and I got up in the morning and she was starting to prepare opening the coffee shop and there was about half a dozen bottles of beer that she took from the fridge from downstairs and she was drinking, this was at eight o'clock in the morning. So she was still very, very angry at me and the fact that she'd been drinking again and I asked her not to open the coffee shop and I said, let's sit down and sort this out. And then the music was blasting, so I turned the music off and then she came at me with one of them. She got that from the kitchen drawer and she came at me with a, with a hand up like that and going to attack me and I, I stuck my hands up there cowering I'm thinking oh this is it this is it she's she's finally flipped and then she just smacked it against the side of the counter and it dug into the side of the counter and at that point she gained she tried to pull the coffee machine off off the counter she threw the coffee grinder on the floor and just proceeded to smash everything up in the kitchen the the um smoothie maker, the, the coffee grinder, emptied all the drawers out all over the floor and I just went out the shop and I just left it to it. So I came back an hour later with the police again and um, again the whole place was a mess and I just asked the police to ask her just to go away. I said I don't want to press any charges, I said just tell her to go away and I don't want her back in the shop ever again. So. The police sat down and obviously a different story to the police compared to my story. But again, there was no marks on her and there was no marks on me. And um, so it was sort of agreed because this is the third time now that she sort of attacked me that she was going to go. And she just grabbed her bags of clothes and a couple of bags and took it to the taxi office over the road from us and left. I've seen her since since all of this happened, and she's again. She, I've I've got no malice against the girl. She obviously had problems of one thing and another, but it's a problem that I couldn't sort out. Although I tried to sort out. So for those people who were living in a violent household with violent girlfriend, the chances of getting it fixed are very very slim. And as much as it's going to hurt and be upsetting for you and your partner, it's the best thing to move away from all of this lot. I don't condone violence at all by a man to a girl or from a girl to a man. You don't need to live your retired life in a violent situation. So I hope you get some value from this story that I told about living with a violent partner in Thailand. So from Les, retired and living the dream. Until the next video, bye for now.